Okay. So tell me when you're all set up. Okay, hold it there. I'm assuming it's yellow flags a target. Okay, so come on back here. Okay, all right, good. Always off. So yeah, when we've got the target line being this way and you've got your body set up this way, we're kind of immediately kind of presenting the ball to start over here, which I think that when you see that, you know that's wrong. So the closed stance is really forcing something that's getting this club to come out and come across a little bit. So this is kind of how I want to look at this. Um, come on over here and stand in front of these balls for a sec. So I've got the stance open or pointed to the left and a pretty good amount, like left of all of these flags. And I want you to feel as though that you're going to play the ball back in your stance. All right. It's going to feel like it's back in your stance. And then from here, this is where I want you to feel like you're taking it up, like it takes forever and then just crush down on it. Okay. So I only want you to feel as though that you've got a like chop it down, downswing. And we're going to just try and see what the ball flight does by you having the stance open, the ball back, and then from here feeling like it's long down. Okay. Awesome. Really good. Really good. The fact that that ball didn't start way left was great. So that divot line right there in front of you basically points at the target. So if you feel like you try and get your club to go down through that divot line, it's going to give you all the feels you need to hit the ball pretty straight. Okay, so it'll take the longest to get this to the top. Does that feel really slow? No. Okay. You mean time, you're talking time versus length. Yeah, I think in your... When you're saying long, you're saying slow. Not yeah, like both, that. both, both. You got it. So like when it only goes back a short distance, it's only going back that short distance because your arms are really fast off the takeaway. And the second that the club goes up, it's like, oh, I'm done. So just give it lots of length, way better. Lots of length, lots of time, make it feel slow. And then from there, swing through your divot patch. Great shot. Okay. I know a little thin. Six. Is this seven? Six. So stance is going to feel open. Once you're there, take a look up at the target so you get a feeling of like, okay, that definitely looks open. All right. Got to train your eyes too. All those are great, by the way. All of those back swings. Phenomenal. So, in the world of trying to create a ball flight, what do you think you have to do to make this ball start to the right and curve in toward the left? In my mind? Or... Yeah, yeah. In your world of what you know about golf, if I asked you, hey, here's you know a billion dollars to hook this, start this to the right and curve it to the left, oh, would, what are you trying to do? I would have my, I would normally have my stance right okay but in the in the structure of these two orange sticks though probably close my club face and swing out. okay i like it um how would you show me how you would do that 
with the ball position change? Uh, I don't. Okay. Make sure the toes are even with that first one. There you go. The biggest push, then hook. Okay. Okay. I, I think your recipe was good. I like it. Let's just try it. Let's hit one solid doing the same thing you just mentioned. That was pretty close. But I bet that felt pretty good. Looked no, it looked great. The timing of your swing changed, and your ideas of what you're trying to do with the club changed. But like video-wise, all of these look the same. Not bad. Like if I wanted to do one and I could not, I could close my feet. Yeah, you could do that all day. Right? The, the pull hook's the easiest one because all you have to do is do this to the face and do anything. Um, the one where we try and feel like we're swinging a little bit more out on the ball with the face closed, like that's the opposite way that you're used to hitting it. And that's why it's the hard one. Cool. Okay, so a couple things um, with hitting this shot. The reason I like this big divot pattern is it lets you kind of see where you've got to get the club to go, right? I mean, if I'm going to hit a shot and I want this club to be in to out relative to my target line, which is the orange, right? I can kind of see down there what straight is. Trying to deliver this club that way, being more in front of it to hit it lower, right? Those are the things that are going to put this together. So I've got my ball position back. I've got the face pointed out over that stick because that's where I need the ball to fly. And then get just getting in front of it sends that ball out to the right. So when you talked about swinging this club this way with the club face closed, it's going to feel like you're trying to swing out over these balls, but trying to twist this thing to go that way. And then you start to get the idea of what it feels like to do it your way instead of just saying, hey, like, I think it was over here somewhere. I'm not quite sure, right? So the concepts that we have to have, you know, are gonna be everything in terms of what you try and do. So we've got the club path coming this way, in to out. In order to hit the ball lower, we need to get more in front of the ball. And then from there, as it swings in to out, it's gonna be more prone to wanting to turn over. And so we're gonna get this turnover part by you feeling as though, that you don't speed your arms up past the golf ball line. So, start it out to the right, ball position back. Oops, a little thin, that's the shot. Starts right, curves left. Okay, so set up to that one for me. Good, ball back. Okay, so big backswing, lots of time, feel you got the direction. Good. So it's not going to feel fast, it's going to feel long. Stop your arms, let the hands go. Floppy wrists. Let's 
So that ball line, like where the ball would be, I want to make sure that I really try and keep everything into that line slow with my arms. It has to slow down in order for this to release. So if it doesn't go back far enough, we can't get enough speed to bring it down and slow down. No, your backswing's getting longer, definitely getting longer. Not too bad. But I would say that like every swing that you make trying to feel like you can get this ball flight to happen has to feel like it takes longer, the backswing's slower, you're a little softer for a little longer, and then give it hell. That was actually a very good swing. Like a touch on the heavy side. But you see that ball flight? Started right, curved left. Okay. So, okay. So this is where I'm trying to go with this, is I want you to hit enough balls with this that it feels comfortable that you can create a ball flight doing this. And then you're going to find something you like in between the short and speedy and this long and lazy. And every time it doesn't curve back, the arms went too fast past the ball. Okay, that's what's giving you your draw. We'll get a draw if the arms stop on time. I just wanted you to play it back to see what it's like to get the ball to start right and curve left. Um, if you feel like now you want to put it back somewhere closer to where you were, cool. It's more just an exercise at this point. Like, that's crushed, huh? I mean, it's seven iron, obviously. Okay. But still, like, that ball started to the right of where your feet were. It drew, so you didn't have the extra speed to the arms. You did a lot of great stuff there. Back at it too quick, like almost like a, almost like a leg up here. Yeah. And then I hit it better. Okay. Cool. Now that's just Obviously a feeling that shows up, yeah. right? So we we recognize when it shows up, but don't try to create it. You'll lose it. Definitely. No, I think that's really good. Um, let's move the ball a little bit forward from that spot. Like one golf ball more forward from where you just had it. Absolutely. The slowest, longest backswing. That one. So that's what I want to create as your stock shot. It's like pretty straight, but when it falls, it falls that way. Any time that your ball bleeds out to the right, instantly chalk it up to super quick tempo and all the other stuff that comes with it. Like mechanically, you're in, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So from a stopwatch perspective, if I started it when you took the club away, and stop that when the club hit the ball, I want more time. And wherever it is you want to find it. Wonderful. Okay, so double check your alignment that it's uh, left with the first orange stick. Terrific. Why do you think I did that? Why do I short, short? No, I think that by trying to find a longer time, every so often you're going to get jittery. Like, oh no, I should be hitting the ball by now, right? And it's like a bit of a flinch. 
So I want this to be the longest, softest, easiest, laziest swing that you can show me, where you literally give up as soon as your arms get to the ball. Yeah. You missed it to the right and it curved right to left. I think that's incredible. So I'd love to get you to go and like sprint a hundred yards and come back and then show me this long and lazy swing. So in the event that like you're on the golf course and things aren't going well, this is where we just, okay, just longer, slower, lazier and go from there. Cause I think you're finding distance gains from this, aren't you? Yeah, I don't have to, I, everybody thinks I'm trying to kill the ball, I'm not. No, I know. It's like I'm trying to hit it slow. I know, I'm, I'm totally with you. These are great. These are all, yes. Uh, let's go over the three flags. Over the three flags in front of you, toward the, probably the tallest tree. Okay, hold on. Your start line is to the right of that yellow OB stick in front of us. Yeah, your, your club face and your alignment to the right of that. So, you see the other yellow stick up there? Now I would say that you're pretty much at the tree. You're good there. Like, as you set your body up, stare at where you're trying to go with it. Good, I like it. Really good. Slow your arms down, keep your wrists floppy. All of that will have to happen. I'd say every time that you hit a ball that goes, that curves too much to the left, you've holstered it the fastest. As opposed to what? Uh, as opposed to feeling like the arms can slow down and then when the body turns, it brings them out here, but they're farther from you. Just keeping them soft, letting them stretch. So it's the same idea with the irons as the driver, right? The longest backswing in terms of distance or length as well as time, right? And the golf ball is where the arms are decelled to zero. They've got to zero by that point. The only other feel that I could kind of toss in here is a squeeze feel and try to avoid the arm squeezing too much. Squeeze, like squeezing all the muscles in your arms. The second that you squeeze, they're ready to go fast. Keep them soft. Alignment a little more left. There you go. So if we have overdraws or pulls or pushes and fades, all of that is a squeeze and yes, a squeeze and arms that go for too fast. They go for too long. So 
as soon as we start getting the right, it's going to feel like tempo to you. As soon as you find the right tempo, it's going to be the same high draw toward that big tree every time. So slow it down, lengthen it out, delay it forever. Yeah. Yeah, that's losing your balance. When you lose your balance because your arms are swinging so fast in the backswing, it, it kind of... Yeah, oh yeah. You know, I could say that you create... That's what happens. I hit a bunch of irons. Yeah. I got my tempo. Yeah. Locked up, hit a good drive. Yeah. Then I'm hitting driver, and I'm losing that tempo. Okay, so the first thing is, is that if you normally hit it 280, you're going to find 300 through slower and longer. Well, I don't even care about it. I'm just saying that... Well, the reason it speeds up is because you're trying to hit it farther than the other clubs. So... Yeah, give me the slowest, biggest amount of time possible. Like really good motion. One more time. Get my hand. And so the hands kick in when you don't squeeze. But if you're squeezing, your wrists are locked. That's your fade. So it's like the arms stop, the wrists are floppy, so the hands can let the club keep going. And so the release happens because you're soft and stop things. Lots of time. Awesome. That's what I mean. The high draw is built into your whole game when you do this. That was crushed, but I bet you felt that was slow. Like you had... And, and, the, and the, right on the, like I felt like I hit it right. Right in the middle, for sure. So this is where we kind of get to a point where you feel like you are slower, but the ball's going farther, and you think, well, if I just add in my normal speed, I can hit it even farther than that. Your normal speed is what makes the ball spray. So we changed your power sources a bit. So any ball that fades, that was fast arms past the ball into the holster. And then bend, yes, yeah. Always trying to push the grip away from your face. Yeah. I want to push that grip away from my face forever. Absolutely. And so that's the shot that I want to build in as the miss. If you were to miss it, it's going to go hard and it's going to go down the left side. Right? Or it's going to go straight out to the right with no curve but all the fades have to disappear and those are going to disappear with your feeling of time and tempo. So this is how I used to think of my alignment and stuff. So I have all these. So if I've got my ball teed up here and we're trying to go down to our target, I feel as though that if I line my club face up down the target line right about there, that I'm pretty good. Now, you know, I stand a good distance away from the ball. So now if I put another ball here, when I set my feet up to hit the club face down that line, I set my toes up to that golf ball. But I see a lot of people that pick their spot out in front, they put their face pointed at that, and then they start looking at that saying, that's where I'm aiming, right? Okay, so, you know, I don't know what that is, three and a half feet, three and a half feet. So I've got the golf ball lined up over that one because that's, that's where I'm trying to send it. And when I look up, like when I look through that golf ball in a straight line, it's out toward that tall tree over there. It's miles to the right. But I know that that golf ball to that golf ball creates a line at my target. All right, so club face points over there. It's going to feel like it's miles to the right, like I mentioned. So you're pointing at that golf ball or you're pointing club face? Club face at that ball, uh -huh. toes at this ball. What's miles to the right? 
the uh, the fat. Well, come over here. You have to see it. So address the face at that ball. Yeah. Okay. Where does that feel like it's pointed? Yeah. Right. Like, it's going right. like red flag, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, not that right, but I would say for me it doesn't feel that right. I would say it's. Oh, I mean, if you looked through that ball. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 Right. So that's what I, that's where I kind of look at this. Like you can draw the imaginary rectangle here and you can set up where that points there, feet points there. Now, you know, you're square to everything. And then from here, it's, it's just the idea that this takes forever and that the arms stop at the T you're trying to move your body forward, but you want no more arm speed past the T it's decelled by the time it gets there. You could have a goal for this. It's how far can I hit it, making my back swing feel the longest and the slowest, and I get the club back to the ball in the biggest amount of time. All right, like how far can you go making the longest, laziest swing? Once you've set up into the box, great. Now's your challenge. Pretty good. Notice how the majority of these are really workable, right? Like they're down there. 